Okay, today we're going to create a hybrid animal using Pixlr. And so you're going to go to create new. Um, my suggestion is to choose Ultra HD, that way you have a nice large canvas. And let's just call this hybrid and your name and then click on create. All right, so now you've got your canvas. Now you need to go over to uh, Google Images. And let's see, I'm going to have to get out of this thing here. There we are. And go to, I just typed the word animals. I mean, you can type any kind of animal you want, but let's just, I found this picture here of this raccoon. And one of the things that I would suggest um, you do, and this is really important, first of all, is to make sure that when you do this, click on tools. Up here, when you type in your word, click on tools and click on um, where it says size, any size, choose large, because that way you're not going to get a small and a large um, size image. You're going to get large images only. And uh, that's a good, that's otherwise what you're going to have is you might have something that's sort of pixelated when you make it bigger against something that's not pixelated and it just look weird. So, you know, you can go around, look for, my suggestion is to look for things that are the same, you know, sort of, sort of the same color, like these two right here. You know, they're both, they both got white fur. Um, and, you know, different, different markings and so forth. Uh, it's kind of more interesting when it's less obvious. Uh, you know, so for example, something like this is a brown. You can, you can actually change the colors using Pixlr to make it more of a certain color. But, uh, you know, let's go down. Okay, so I, I found this one here. So I'm going to right click on it, copy image, go back to Pixlr, right click, or I can't right click, uh, control V to paste. And there it is. And uh, then uh, if this is going to be the body, I'm going to make this the body, then I'm going to put this, I'm going to make it nice and big so it fills, fills the canvas. Okay, so I'm gonna, you can always crop it later, but uh, let's just try to get the whole thing. So I guess, I guess I'll do some cropping later, but just make it as big as you can. And then let's go back and find something to cut to, to use as a head. Now I can go down here to, uh, let's see, there's a kitten up here. This might be a possibility. The cool thing about this kitten and this thing right here, the raccoon, is that their heads are facing in the same direction. But I also saw something else down here that was kind of fun. And you've got this dog. Um, but it's sort of the same coloring, but kind of a different animal. And I was looking at this guy right here which might be kind of fun. So let's see, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to right click on this copy image, go back to Pixlr and right click again. Oops, that's right. It doesn't work. Uh, you can go up here to edit and paste or you can go control V. Okay. Now here's the problem. You can see that this is, this is what I was talking about. See, now if I make this bird larger, I don't know how good it's going to look. Yeah, it's not too bad. It doesn't look too big. It's not going to pixelate. But, you know, if you have that problem where you make it big and it just doesn't look the same kind of, doesn't have a certain same pixel look to it, you definitely don't want to do it. But this one looks pretty good. So um, sort of arrange it so that it's kind of in the right place. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect at the, to begin with. And the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to just want to cut around the head. So notice that we're on two layers. Now make sure that the background layer is not in front. Uh, the background or the body layer should be in the back. So you can just drag and drop. So if you have it like, let's say I pasted this one first or second, then I would just click here, drag it down below the other layer. Oops, too far. So that the top layer is the head. And then just use the tools that you've already learned to get rid of the background. In this case, I can pretty easily do that with the um, the wand select tool and i can just go to you know click on areas around the bird's head oops i'm on the wrong i'm on the wrong layer so you got to make sure you're on the right layer so you see they selected the uh, raccoon so control d it selects and then i click on the correct layer and then click up here and it looks like i think it's a bit laggy 
Now, notice it, it picked up way too much of the bird. I want the background. So I'm going to go up here to tolerance, and I'm going to move the tolerance down to I don't know, 15. Let's try that again. So I'm going to do it again. Yeah, this is really laggy today. All right, I'm going to try one more time over here. Okay, so that's much better. I'm getting I'm getting around the bird's head. And uh, so you just hit delete. And you can see the, uh, the raccoon behind it. And since there's a whole bunch of stuff here that is not, I'm not too worried about, I'm just going to use the eraser tool to get rid of the rest of it. Now, I just want to show you something. If I click on the eraser tool right now, and I try to... Your brush here. Okay. Now, if I try to erase stuff here, notice it's not erasing. Nothing's happening. That's because my selection is still there. It will only erase what's in the selection. And if what's in the selection has already been erased, so I need to deselect, turn off the selection. Okay. And now, let me make it a little bigger. Remember, period, the period key makes it bigger. You can see that by pressing it. And the comma key makes it smaller. So I'm just going to make it bigger and I'm going to do a race. This area here, which hmm, doesn't seem to be working. I'm going to erase it again. The erase the brush is fine. Hard tip. Everything seems to be there. Now, if this happens to you, my suggestion is click off the tool and click on. The tool again. Okay, so I clicked on to paint, I was just random, and now I'm clicking on eraser, and notice it works now. So sometimes, sometimes you have to kind of fool the program into working for you. And it seems like uh, Pixar is getting a little laggy on me right now, but we'll just deal with it. Now, one way you can erase quickly is if you click, and you gotta watch, watch out, you don't take too much, and then you hold the shift key down. It will do. A, it will draw a line between where you first clicked and where you clicked again. So you see, all of that area just got deleted. So it's kind of a quick way of deleting um, stuff. Yeah, you can see this is really slow today. And that's okay. Sort of click and wait, click and wait, click and wait. Could because I'm recording this. All right, so I'm just gonna. Clean up around the bird here. Very carefully next to its face. I'm just I don't want to leave any hard lines. Okay, and let's take the rest of this right here. Now you can see that the raccoon is 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 behind it. So I'm on the I'm on this layer right now, so the raccoon is not getting affected. All right, so now I want to go back to the arrange tool, which is the arrow, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to Make this so he kind of covers the raccoon's face and kind of rotate it a little bit if I need to. Uh, you know, if I wanted to just kind of look, you know, he's turning his head like this makes it look like he's a little bit angry, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to make it look like this. And now I've got to do a, a little more cleanup on the, I'm going to do a little more cleanup on this thing. So I'm going to zoom in here and I want to get rid of this gray stuff. So again, I think. The best tool for me to use is probably the magic wand or the wand tool. And again, uh, with the wand tool, I'm setting the tolerance down low because I don't want to select too much. So I'm just selecting this gray right here. On the bird, I'm going to hit delete. Maybe a little bit more. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that's that's kind of getting into a little bit too much. I might be grabbing a little bit too much. Let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, I'll go over here. Yeah, I might have to do some cleaning up over there, but okay. So just to get just to get some of that weird. Now this, ah, I don't want to do that. So again, I'm going to go get the eraser tool, and uh, probably better better idea is to get a fuzzy eraser because I want to I want to do this kind of cleanly. So I'm going to click on the fuzzy eraser. Now notice that uh, I've got a selection right. So again, it's not going to work unless I turn off the selection. So control D turns off the selection. So I get that other stuff here gone. 
if I turn off the bottom layer like this, you can see now I can see better uh, what I need to clean up here. So just want to get this. Oops, I'm on the I'm on the bottom layer, so I might have just erased something on the bottom layer. So I'm going to put Control Z or undo. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the bottom layer. By clicking on a little little box, the checkbox there. Okay, I'm making sure that I'm on the top layer, making sure that the top layer is selected. Right here. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger using the period. And once again, I'm just going to see it's not working. So again, I'm going to go over here and just click on a different tool. Click on the bucket tool and click on the eraser tool again. And there it is. Look at that. It works again. And I've got some, some residual stuff out here as well, you can see. So I just want to go back and get rid of that. And anything else, like right over here, I've got a little bit. And then this stuff, this, this stuff that's kind of going along the hole over here. I'm getting, getting a little bit into the bird, but that's okay. Do this carefully, and I just don't want this thing here, so I'm going to get rid of that. And Okay, so the bird's pretty clean. I'm going to get rid of this hard line under its beak right here. That's why the fuzzy tool is nice. And maybe I'll do that over here as well. And just, just making it nice and sort of clean looking. And I've got this little weird thing up here that I'm just going to get rid of. I'm not, I'm not going to, this is not going to be my best work, but I'm just trying to show you how this is, how this could work here. So, up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit right there. Okay, so I'm not going to belabor this too much. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the bottom layer again. And now I've got the raccoon and I've got his ears. And so that's a bit of a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity on the um, ostrich's head, uh, about 50%. So I can still see the ostrich's head, but then I can also see what I want to fix. Kind of weird looking. Okay, so I'll just close that. All right, so I've got these ear tips right here that I need to get rid of. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the image of the raccoon, and I'm going to use the clone tool, and I'm going to use this background area here, and I'm going to use the fur over here and I'm going to clone it over the, uh, the ears. I can't use the eraser tool because if I use the eraser tool, all I'm doing is erasing. And it's going to just leave a big giant hole. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go over here to the clone tool, which is a stamp. Okay. And remember, it needs to be on source. And when it's on source, I'm going to click um, just above the ear right here. I'm going to click. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to go down and just clone away the ear. Now notice I don't have to do very much because all I have to do is get rid of the part that's showing behind, uh, behind the ostrich's head. So you don't have to, uh, I don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning up the rest of his ear. And then I'm going to go over to the other side. Again, I'm going to click on source or I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to go close to, but not, uh, you know, into the ear area. Hold on the shift key again. Oops, control Z. I do want to do that. Uh, click on source. It's on source. I'm going to click this area here, and then I'm going to go, and I'm going to clone away the ear by using the hair that is near the ear. Okay, so when I go back to the head here, the ostrich's, uh, the ostrich's head, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to bring the transparency back up. And so you can see that the raccoon's ears are no longer a problem. Okay, so one of the things that is kind of noticeable is that the raccoon's fur and the, the head of the, um, the uh, ostrich are different colors. One way I could deal with that is by making sure I'm on the ostrich's head. I can go up here to adjustment 
And I can play with things like temperature and tint. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm just going to try it. So if I go like this and I move this around, okay, so that makes it more orange. So maybe I want to make it a little darker. That's uh, not working. Okay, so this may not be the trick right here. Yeah, I'm going to cancel that. So let's go up to uh, hue and saturation, see if that works. Okay, that might be a little bit better. I'm going to go over here. And so you see, I'm, okay, so that's making it a little, um, a little color difference here. Okay, so now, so you can, if you want, you can try to do this. This is not really working for me. Um, but there, there are ways of doing something like this. Um, you can go to colorize. I don't know if that would work. That's not going to work. Let's not mess with that. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that and check one more thing up here, and that's color balance. Um, so color balance, again, you can, you can play with it, get to where maybe you can get the colors kind of closer. Uh, one, one last thing. The other adjustment, though, is curves. I love curves because curves are something you can really play with. And so you double click on this line and go like this. And if you move it up and down, you might, eh, it's not going to work. Okay. But you could get sort of close. Now, the other thing that you can do, here, let me apply that. The other thing you can do is you can go ahead and use the clone tool again. But to do that, you're going to need to merge down. So I'm going to go over here to layer and merge down. Now I've got the top layer selected, so it's going to merge into the bottom layer. So I'm going to click on merge down. And doing that means that they're all together now. So what I could do is I could actually go right here to this, this one right here. And probably, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but if I use the clone tool, let's just, let's just see. Let's have some fun with it. Now the thing about the clone tool is it's something up here called opacity. And opacity, what that does is it makes it a little less um, uh, solid in terms of the look. So if I just want to like lightly brush it on, I'm going to move the opacity. Let's move the opacity down to about 70%. And I'm going to click on this area here. It is my source. Okay, my source is not very big, so I'm going to get a I'm going to make a brush bigger with that area. Okay, and I'm going to go over here and let's just see what happens when I do this. And notice I just did very lightly. So it's not like it's super obvious. So I'm just using a little bit of the raccoon's fur. I'll do the same thing right here. Okay. So you can see it's kind of just giving it a, it's blending in a little bit here and it may I don't know if this is going to work, but I can kind of just a little, oops, too far. It's this laggy thing going on here. So again, control Z. And so um, just, just a little bit right there. So, you know, close up, you might say, mm, that doesn't look so good. But you know what? Zoom out then and see what happens. I think you'll see that it looks a little bit better now. Okay, maybe it's not perfect. Maybe I could have done something else, but it gives it a very interesting look. And now I've got my ostrich raccoon. So that's just a quick and quick and easy way of creating a hybrid.